When Jesus, when Jesus come, where will you, where will you be? Four minutes until she <clears throat> When the trumpet, when the trumpet sound, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where when the trumpet, when the trumpet sound, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sound, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus. When Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sound, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the, I know that's that good. When the trumpet, when the trumpet sound, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sound, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus where will you, where will you, when the trumpet, when the trumpet sound, where will you, where will you be, when Jesus, when Jesus sound, where will you, when the trumpet, when the trumpet sound, where will you, where will you, when Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sound, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sound, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sounds, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sounds, where will you when Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sounds, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sounds, where will you, when Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sounds, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sounds, where will you when Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet comes, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? 
when I trump and when I trump and come, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trump and when I trump and come, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you when the trump and when the trump and sound, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you, where will you be? When the trump and when the trump and sound, where will you, where will you be? When Jesus, when Jesus comes, where will you be? Where will you be? When the trumpet, when the trumpet sound, where will you, where will you be? Hallelujah. Honey, I want to ask you a question. When Jesus comes, where will you be? In the church of God. Amen. Amen. Now, when you leave this earth, where will you be going to? Heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to know where we are going. Yeah. When we leave this earth, yes, you can't just be in this earth and then you don't know where you are going. There should be a destination. You should be going somewhere. Hallelujah. That's why we are coming to you today to talk about where will you spend your eternity. This is very, very important because we need to know where we are going. We want you to call all your friends and families and everyone to begin to key in watching through Facebook and Blog Talk Radio and all the stations are open all over the world. People are viewing and listening to Power of Miracles Radio and TV Ministries reaching you all the way from Langham, Maryland. This is Archbishop Stephen John Biokuro coming your way with a living word of God that saves, heals, delivers and blesses. We want to thank every one of you who have contributed for these programs to come on and uh, those of you who send donations and offerings, God continue to bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. God reward you abundantly for your kindness and your love to help push this word of God on diluted truth of the gospel to the nations of the earth. Even now that we can't travel around the world, we are traveling through the media through the radio, through the internet, we are reaching out to nations. We want to thank God for what he is doing. Hallelujah. We're still going to sing one or two songs, Mom. He says, um, Your works cannot set you free if not Jesus who sin and come. Come have eternal life. Come set you free. Come read your Bible. Your words cannot set you free, if not Jesus, who sin and come, come and return alive. Confess your sins, repent of it now, confess your sins, don't read your Bible. Your words can never set you free, if not Jesus, who sin and come, come and return alive. Yes, who sinner come and have eternal life. Yes, eternal, eternal life, eternal, eternal life. I want to live eternal life, God save my soul. I want to live eternal life, God save my soul. Eternal, 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 eternal life. I want to live eternal life, God save my soul. I want to live eternal life, God save my soul. Eternal, eternal life, eternal, eternal life. You want to live eternal life, God save your soul. I want to live eternal life, God save my soul. Eternal, eternal. Eternal, eternal life. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. 
I want to live eternal life. Thou say, eternal, eternal life, eternal, eternal life. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. Only where do you want to live eternal life? In heaven. Yes, in heaven. My heavenly home, how beautiful. My heavenly, how beautiful. My home on earth is beautiful, but out of heaven is more beautiful. My heavenly home, how beautiful. My heavenly home, how beautiful. My home on earth is beautiful, but out of heaven is more beautiful. My heavenly home, how beautiful. My heavenly home, how beautiful. My home on Your home, your home, your real home is heaven. Yes, when you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are spending eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven. But when you reject Jesus, then you'll be living in hell for millions of years. You don't have to go that way. You need to follow Jesus to the kingdom of God. On that day of judgment, heaven will be my home. On that day of judgment, heaven will be my home. On that day of judgment, heaven will be my home. On that day of judgment, heaven should be your home. On the day of judgment, where will your, your, your house be? Heaven will be my home. May that be your story too. May heaven be your home. Some people, they are just in this world. They don't know where they are going. When they die now, they don't know. You know, COVID-19, uh, COVID people dying left and right, front and back. You know, if you don't know where you are going, it's a terrible situation. You need to know where you are going to. There must be a destination. Where will you spend your eternity? That's our topic today. And uh, our text is taken from St. Louis Gospel, chapter 16. Holy Spirit, interpret your word to your people. Holy Spirit, speak through me to your people. And let them know the truth. And the truth shall set them free. In the name of Jesus Christ, we need to know where we are going when we leave this earth. It's not enough to go to church and come back. We need to know the truth and the truth sets us free. Hallelujah. Yes, our topic is where will you spend eternity? It is the greatest question of all time. Eternity. You are born to live forever. Yes, you were born to live forever. How many years you will live on earth depends on you and God. Some people live for 50 years, some people live for 90 years, 100 years. But when you finally have lived and have died. Yes, of course, everybody's going to die. <laughs> so we're not going to run away from that. <laughs> I know some people don't like that. They don't like talking about that type of, you know, but, but the truth is that everyone must die one day. Scripture says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, judgment. You can't escape that. No. Nobody is escaping that. Everyone is going to leave this earth and will be going to a direction. Where will you, where will you go? 
is what we are talking about now. So it's very, very important. Anybody you know anywhere in the world, call them, email them, tell them to get on Facebook, get on the internet and get this message because what you are going to hear now will determine where you will go when you leave this earth. This is very important. Yes. Our text is taken from Luke chapter 16 from verse 19 to 31. St. Luke's Gospel chapter 16 from verse 19 to 31 is the story of Lazarus and the rich man. It's a very popular story. We all know this about Lazarus and the rich man in the Bible. And uh, Jesus was using all this parable to teach, to make us know about the kingdom of God, heaven, and uh, what it is. In this story, you find that in Luke 16, Luke chapter 16, from verse 19 to 31, there are two persons there, the rich man and Lazarus. Very important. St. Luke's Gospel chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. There are two persons there, the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man was so rich that he had everything to himself. He was rich, of course. There's no sin in being rich. God is not against you being rich. Oh, yes. Of course, in the Bible, people were rich. Abraham was rich. Job was rich. And um, even Jesus Christ was not a poor person. He, he, he was feeding the poor and the hungry. He had disciples, took care of people. He was helping, you know. And uh, there's nothing wrong in being rich. The rich man lived without Christ. He lived without God. He didn't reverence God, he didn't worship God, he didn't serve God, he didn't become a Christian, he didn't repent, he didn't give his life to Jesus, he didn't turn away from sin and evil, so he lived to himself. And then Lazarus, from all indications, showed that though he was poor, he reverenced God. He lived for Jesus. He lived for God. He followed the narrow way that leads to eternal life. And uh, he will come before the rich man and looking for food to eat, he will eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. The rich man with all his wife, they will be making mockery of Lazarus and uh, uh, made mockery of him. Where is the God your servant? Where is the Jesus? Where is, you know, all kind of things which people do today. But Lazarus didn't care. He just lived his life for God. And the scripture says that both of them died. Luke chapter 16 verse 19 to 31. Both of them died. Lazarus died and the rich man also died. And then the scripture spoke about Lazarus first. So when Lazarus died, the angels came and carried his spirit into heaven, into the kingdom of God, to be with Jesus at the bosom of Abraham. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> may that be your story in the name of Jesus. When you leave this earth, may the angels of God take you into the heavenly into the glory to be with Jesus forever and ever. The read the book of Revelation talks about the streets of heaven, the golden gate, we shall walk, walk in the golden gate, we shall walk, walk in the golden gate, we shall walk, walk in the golden gate, Jesus my Savior and I, we walk, Walk in the golden gate, I will walk. Walk in the golden gate, I will walk. Walk in the golden gate, Jesus my Savior and I. You will walk, walk in the golden gate, you will walk. Walk in that golden gate, I will walk. Walk in the golden gate. Jesus, my Savior, and I say we shall walk in the golden gate. Oh, my God. Heaven is so beautiful. Heaven is so beautiful. You need to be there. You know, don't miss it. Yes, 
Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one coming to the Father except through him. The rich man died, and the Bible says he went to hell fire. Can you imagine? Upon all those wealth and riches and everything, the rich man also died. And the scripture said he was taken into hell fire. The demons came, Satan, his master. Ha. To whom you give yourself, servants to obey, his servants ye are. That's what the word of God said. If you follow Satan, you follow demons, you follow witches, you follow the, the enemy, you are going to hell fire where they all belong there. And the fire burns 24 7. And uh, the worms diet not. The worms are eating them. They are crying and gnashing of teeth in hell fire. You know, and many people are going to be there. Yes. They are already there, several of them. Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many are going over the earth. See, the way of Satan, the way of lust, the way of evil, the way of immorality, the way of stealing, the way of adultery and fornication, the way of prostitution. The way of lesbian and pornography, the way of homosexuality, the way of racism. You hate people, you don't love God. Now you say you are going to heaven, you are not going to heaven. You don't even love fellow human beings that are around you. Go and kneel down on somebody's neck and kill the person. Carry guns and shoot people, kill people all over the whole place. You are not coming to heaven. Except you repent, you shall likewise perish. And so the rich man died and did not enter the kingdom of God. Of course, Jesus said in John chapter 3, Except a man be born again of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is spirit. The rich man died and went to hell fire. He was burning and screaming all because he rejected Jesus Christ. Let me make this clear. The rich man did not go to hell fire because he was rich. Please, don't misunderstand the Bible. The rich man did not go to hell fire because he was rich. No, that's not what it is. He rejected Jesus Christ. He refused to be born again. He refused to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He refused to serve God. He refused to worship God. He refused to live a holy life. He lived in sin. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. What shall it profit you if you shall gain the whole world and suffer the lose of your soul? Today is the day of salvation. As many as receive Christ, to them God gave power to become the sons of God. As many as receive Jesus Christ. And then, if you look that scripture down, Jesus said, it is very difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And then he demonstrated it. He said, it is easier for a camel to pass through the, than a, a, a needle to pass through the, you know, he was demonstrating it. He said, it's very difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. What does that mean? You are loving your riches more than Christ. You don't love God enough. You are thinking of your wealth and your riches and your seeking your face the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. That's what Jesus meant. Seek your face the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added 
unto you. That's what Jesus is trying to say there. But what do we see today? People are seeking the worldly things, the wealth and the riches of this world. They will die and leave all of them. I was looking through the news. They were talking about the richest man on earth, the richest woman on earth, the richest black man on earth, the richest, uh, the richest this person. And I was reading all those nonsense. You are going to die and leave those things behind. You don't own anything. <laughs> hey, you got to leave everything behind. It is what you do for God that shall remain. Ah, now, this is very serious. It is what you will do for God that will remain. What are we going to do for God? Are you supporting the gospel of Jesus Christ? You are sticking rich and you are holding money away. All you want to you want to be called a billionaire. I mean, millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire. I have billions. I have trillions. I, I have wealth and riches. And you are not doing anything for the kingdom of God. Perish with your money. Perish with your money. God is not looking for you. It is what you do for God that will remain. You need to go and support the work of God everywhere. Oh, go to the churches, go to the evangelists, go to the pastors, the, the reverends, the bishops, the archbishops. Go to the servants, of, give them money, give money to the work of God. Put money in the churches, put money in the ministry, put money, let the work of God go on. Whether God will not reward you with salvation and the kingdom of God. How come you are stacking wealth and riches? You want to be called trillionaire. I'm a billionaire. I'm a billionaire. Stupid. You will die and go to hell with all those nasty riches. You are not going anywhere with them. You are going to leave them here and other people will eat them up. See? But when you sow in the kingdom of God, when you give to the work of God, and the work of God is moving and prospering on earth. God will never forgive, forget you. Salvation will be your portion. When you have Christ's work, you have the things of God, you have... There are, I, I know a lot of rich Christians who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. Heavenly minded, kingdom minded people. Oh yes, that's what it should be. Kingdom minded, your wealth and your riches is for the work of the Lord. Why will you hoard wealth and keep riches and keep them away in banks and here and there? And the work of God is suffering on earth. And then you say you are going to heaven. That's what Jesus meant. Say it's very difficult for a rich person to go into the kingdom of God because you did not have Christ as the main focus of your wealth. Your wealth was for prostitutes. Your wealth was for cinema, for drinking and partying and eating and drinking like the days of Noah until the water judgment came and carried all of them away. You need to repent of your evil today and give your life to Jesus and let him be your Lord and personal Savior so that you can have eternal life. What shall he profit you? If you shall gain the whole world and suffer the lose of your soul in hell fire. While the rich man was in hell fire, Lazarus was enjoying with Jesus. Hallelujah. Rakaboska. Indoria in Blanda Yeke The greatest salvation in this world is the salvation of your soul. Your soul, that's the greatest thing on earth. The greatest thing in all my life is loving him. The greatest thing in all my life is loving him. I want to love him more. I want to serve him more. The greatest thing in all my life 
is loving you. The greatest thing in all our life is loving you. Oh, yes, Jesus. The greatest thing in all your life is knowing him. I want to know him more. I want to love him more. The greatest thing in all my life is loving him. The greatest thing in all your life in knowing he, oh yes, Lord Jesus, the greatest thing in all our life is love me. Oh yes, I want to love him more. I want to love him more. The greatest thing. In all our lives, it's loving Him. He said, "You should love the Lord thy God, love your neighbor as your, as yourself, love Him more than every other thing, knowing Him." Apostle Paul said that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. That's all. It's what it's all about. The rich man was in hell crying and languishing and suffering in hell fire. The fires are burning him 24-7. The demons are eating him up. And the worms are biting him. And Lazarus, oh dear Lazarus, he was having a good time with the Lord Jesus Christ over there fellowshipping with the saints of God and just worshipping God. Ah, don't miss heaven, oh. If you miss heaven, it is the worst thing that ever happened to you. If you miss heaven, if you miss the kingdom of God, it is the worst thing that ever happened to you. Oh, yeah, because that's it. The whole of your life is going to end in hell fire for millions and millions and billions and trillions of years. You're going to be born in there. And nobody's going to take you out of that place. You're going to be there forever and ever. So it's a very serious matter. <laughs> it's a very serious matter. This is no joke. We are not joking. We're talking about eternal life. Where will you live when you leave this earth? Where will you go when you leave this world? It's a very important topic. And I want you to think about it. And you need to get answer. Lazarus was with Jesus, with heaven, and glorifying God, and watching the streets of gold and beautiful heaven, as described in the book of Revelation. And everything, there is no night there, there is no accident there, there is no rioting, there is no racial discrimination. There is no trouble there. There is no hospital. Everybody just glorifying God and just worshiping God. Some time ago, somebody told me, he said, the most beautiful city on earth is Paris. I said, yes, but heaven is more beautiful than Paris. Oh, go and read the book of Revelation. Describing the streets of gold and all those places in heaven. And when people catch a glimpse of heaven, they don't want to come back here. <laughs> eh? <laughs> I listen to people who testified of God enabling them to catch a glimpse of heaven. They, they saw it. They experienced it. They were there. And they have testimonies. <clears throat> testimonies. Living testimonies <clears throat> of the kingdom of God, <clears throat> how it looks like, and 
what it looks like, they describe it. There was a Christian sister who, who was serving God faithfully. She married a woman with her husband. <clears throat> and uh, she, she had an experience. Her, her, her spirit left her body and she was translated into the heaven. You know, Apostle Paul had this experience too. Then John Wesley, the founder of Methodist Church, had this experience and several others. She was, her spirit was translated into the heavenly, but her body was down here. And uh, while there, Jesus welcomed her. She was there and uh, the, the Lord told her, say, look down. Then she looked down. As she looked down, she saw her body in the earth. The saints of God gathered her body. The, the apostle of her church was praying over her body that she should come back. Come back to life. Come back to life. The, her pastor was praying. So, Jesus told her, I said, well, you are welcome, but your time to be here is not right now. You still have a lot of work to do on it. They, they need you, but they, and uh, well, your time is not up yet for you to come over here to heaven. So you got to go back. So Jesus waved his hand and her spirit left heaven and came back into her body and she woke up. When she woke up, she was angry. <laughs> she was angry and she slapped the pastors and the apostles that were praying for her. She kicked them. Why did you call me back here? I was already with Jesus Christ. I was already experiencing heaven. It was glorious. He started describing the heaven, the, you know, the kingdom of God. And it was a very beautiful experience. John Wesley and several of them, you know, God opportuned them to have a glimpse of heaven. And uh, when, when they come back here, it's never the same. <laughs> they feel like going over there. Oh, no. <laughs> I feel like traveling home. I feel like traveling home. My home in heaven is bright and fair. I feel like traveling home. That's evangelist Jimmy Swaggart. You know? I feel like traveling home. I feel like traveling home. My home in heaven is bright and fair. I feel like traveling home. Oh yes. Sometimes you feel like that. Well, what are we doing this world? This world filled of hatred, people killing each other, killing themselves, no love, it's racism, it's slave trade, it's war, it's fighting, it's killing, it's destruction of life and property. What are we doing here? Come on. Let's go. Let's go. He said, the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall arise first. And then we who are alive shall be caught up to be with the Lord. Don't miss the rapture. <laughs> when the trumpet sound, the saints are gone. And if you are not intense with God, you will be left here. You go through seven years of great tribulation. That's not that's not that's not good. The beast, the man of sin, the false prophet, the six 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 man. They're going to appear, the Antichrist. And they're going to say, we want to bring solution to the problems of this earth. You see, we are one world. One world government, one world church, one world. One world. And what they call one world is <laughs> light and darkness packed together. Eh? <laughs> He put Satan and Jesus Christ in the same hall. There's nothing like that. What has Christ to do with Belial? What has darkness to do with light? No. If you are for Christ, be for Christ. If you are for Belial, go for Belial. 
And all these things they are doing now shows that the end has come. Oh yes. They want to give you 666. They put it in your system. They want to give you things to the right things for your body. They want to put uh, chips into your body and all these things. They, they are preparing for the Antichrist. But by the grace of God, we shall not be victims of those things. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have signed for Jesus and we are going with Jesus. No, that's what it is. Where will you spend the time? And then, of course, there are two passages there. The second passage is about the rich ruler in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 30. Matthew's Gospel chapter 19, verse 16 to 30, talks about the rich ruler who came to Jesus. And uh, he said he has kept the Ten Commandments and everything, and yet he was not saved. So, what should I do to be saved? Yes, the story of the rich ruler in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 30. Jesus said, go and sell all your property, sell everything, and give to the poor. The man was angry. <laughs> what? <laughs> I want to store wealth for myself and my family to come. And then you are telling me to sell my things and give to the poor, and then I will be saved. What Jesus is trying to tell him is, look, all these wealth and houses and buildings and estates and uh, airplanes and cars and all these beautiful things, you are going to die and leave them. What will be important is what you have done on earth. What you are doing for kingdom, say kingdom and science. What are you doing for the kingdom of God? Some people, all they want to talk about is they are going to church. Yes, it's going to go, everybody goes to church. But going to church alone is not what God saved you. You are saved to be a blessing to the body of Christ. You are saved to work for God. Do things for the kingdom's sake. You are not saved to heap wealth and riches. And hide them in bags here and there. And you are not doing anything for the kingdom of God. You are not doing anything. You, you just want to be called a billionaire, a trillionaire, a multi billionaire, multi trillionaire. When I read those things yesterday, the richest man on earth is this. The second richest person is this. The third richest person on earth is this. Perish with your wealth. Perish. I say, perish with your wealth. God doesn't need you. Oh, yes. That's wickedness. It's selfishness and greed. If all you are thinking about is to heap wealth and riches in banks just for you to be called a trillionaire, a billionaire, the richest man on earth, you are a fool. You are an idiot. You have no sense. Die and leave this earth. Leave all those wealth and riches for others to take. Stupid. All you are thinking about is how to heap wealth Put them in bank account and hide them in banks and, and just have estates and buildings, buy every place. And that is all you are thinking about. You are a useless person. That's what Jesus meant. He told the rich man, he said, go and sell those things and help the poor and the needy. And that is very important. Jesus fed 4,000 on one occasion. On another occasion, he fed 5,000. And Jesus was always helping the poor and the needy. That is the ministry of Jesus Christ. God is love. How come you can't even love people enough to help them and be a blessing to humanity and to mankind? All you are thinking about is to heap riches in banks, accounts, and wealth. You will die. You will leave those things and you will go to hell fire where you will be suffering because you didn't contribute anything to the kingdom of God. You are not doing anything for the kingdom of God. You are not. You will perish with your... That's what Peter said. Peter said, perish with your wealth. I don't, we don't need you in the kingdom we don't, God is calling, God is begging you. No. God is not begging anybody. If you don't want to do for God, go and serve Satan 
and let Satan take you to hellfire. You know, it's high time we speak the truth and nothing but the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except to Christ. I pray today that you will begin to think about eternity, eternal life, and how you can be there. Because any moment from now, anybody can die. Okay, see the COVID-19 now. The whole thing is coming back again. And people have started dying all over the place. Look at the news now. Go and look at the news. People are just dying left and right. You can't even stop it. Doctors could not, hospitals could not stop. Nobody could stop it. Are you ready for eternity? Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Eternity is around the corner. You will soon leave this earth. Where will you be going to? What shall it profit you if you shall gain the whole world and suffer the lose of your soul? That is why God gave me this message to put for you to know the truth that the truth shall set you free and save your soul. What you should be thinking about is heaven. Say, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. That's Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Say, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. Yes, Colossians chapter 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. How do you you don't seek heaven. You don't, you're don't. not doing anything about the kingdom of God. You are not helping the work of... You are not... You are just heaping wealth and riches. You will die and go to hell fire with all those riches. They will, no, God doesn't need you. God is not begging you anything. But thank God for Lazarus. The man who kept the Lord and watched the Lord. Even though he was poor, he loved Jesus. He loved God. And the Bible says that when he died, he went straight into the kingdom of God. The angels of God took him to the kingdom of God. May that be your story today. May you love God. May you love to serve God and do things for the kingdom and do things for heaven. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will interpret this message to you because this is very important. I tell you, of all the sermons I have preached in my life as a preacher from 1977 to today, this is the real message God gave me. And I thank God that we are thinking about heaven. We are thinking about the kingdom of God. I thank God that we shall seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness so that other things can be added. And serving God with your life is what it's all about. Apostle Paul in Galatians said to live is for Christ, but to die is gain. When you live, you are living for Jesus, for kingdom's sake. When you die, it is gain to you because you have left this dirty world, you are now in heaven. But now that you are here, on earth, you should live for Jesus. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Let go what may thy Holy Spirit. I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Let come what may, thy Holy Spirit. I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day. Do you live for Jesus day after day? You should live for Jesus. Let come what may. Thy Holy Spirit, you will obey. You live for Jesus day after day. 
Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone who has heard this message, wherever they are in any part of the world. I pray that you will be a doer of this word and not just a hearer alone. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you open up your heart. Let Jesus come in and dwell in you and seek in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Yes, that you will be kingdom minded. That God will use you to do his work right here on earth. You will not be selfish and greedy. You will not be thinking about wealth and riches for yourself. And uh, amassing wealth just for your, just amassing wealth for nothing sake. You should think about the kingdom of God. Think about heaven, the work of God, to support the work of God, so that what you did for God will begin to speak for you. That's the story of Dukas in the Bible and as apostles. When she died, because of her good works, God recommended her. And, and so on and so forth. What is what have you done for the kingdom? What have you done for God for God to reward you? All you think about is stacking wealth and riches for your own self. Nonsense. Stop it. You don't need to just follow Jesus, the narrow way that leads to eternal life. I pray God to bless you. And thank you for listening. Please forward this message to as many people you know all over the world that they will know the truth and the truth has set them free. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. No one coming to the Father is set by him. Thank you all. God bless you abundantly. This is the All Miracles Radio and TV Ministries of the Jesus Christ Global Mission reaching you all the way from Lamham, Maryland. Uh, my wife, Reverend Dr. Felicia Biokoro, we sang and praise God. And uh, we pray God to bless you and your families wherever you are in the name of Jesus. You will not go to hellfire. You should come into the kingdom of God. And so you must seek your first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So all that things will be added unto you. Feel free to email us our miracles TV at juno.com. Our of miracles TV at juno.com You can also reach us on the phone area code 240-552-5899 or you can reach us on 202-460-7110 God bless you all abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ Amen and Amen On the day of judgment Heaven will be my home on the day of judgment. Heaven will be my home on the day of judgment. Heaven will be my home on the day of judgment. Heaven will be my home on the day of judgment. Heaven will be my home on the day of judgment. Heaven will be my home on the day of judgment. Heaven will be my home on the day of judgment. Heaven will be my home. My home on earth is beautiful, but out of heaven. Is more beautiful, my home in heaven, how beautiful, my home in heaven, how beautiful, my home on earth is beautiful, but that of heaven is more beautiful.